Hello, Shadow. How are you? Happy Friday. We made it. Another week. Gone and done, just like that. Onto the weekend, guys. Feels good, I think. You know, I had a pretty restful week, that's for sure. And uh, ready to end the week off with an awesome stream and some good food, of course. Maybe some drinks later. I think Sammy's going to be home pretty early from work today. And on stream today, we are making probably one of my favorite dishes. Lasagna. And I'm sure you guys have eaten a lot of different lasagnas. Or maybe you haven't. Maybe you've only had the one that you can get frozen in the store. Or in the deli section of the store. Either way though, I think it's kind of hard to mess lasagna up. Like, is, have you ever really had a bad lasagna? I don't think so. I don't think that exists. Maybe if it's too dry. But other than that, it's pretty hard to mess up. And it's a really fun dish to make your own. <laughs> Viewed. That's it. Screw dinner, man. Butter tarts all the way. I didn't even look at the photo in Discord. Okay, let me check right now. And check on my browser. I saw your just the update as I was getting ready. I was like, oh, he made butter tarts. They're so good. And how are the almonds in them this time? I'm sure it gave a really good crunch. Yum. Now I really want butter tarts, Vune. How did the rest of your stream go? Okay, and with our lasagna today, just because it's a pretty heavy dish on its own, you need to definitely pair a sort of vegetable with it. And I would go obviously with something more green compared to a heavy root vegetable. So I chose broccoli today since it's been a little while since I've made broccoli. And we're gonna do it charred up under the broiler in the oven. So it's still gonna have a little bit of crunch after it's cooked. And it's not just gonna be this like limp, soggy, mushy broccoli. It's gonna have that little bit of crunch and it's gonna have lemon and capers. So kind of like a citrus and briny thing going on. And then I think I'm gonna use the chili garlic oil to dress it as well. And I think that will be really, really good. And if we wanna get crazy, I do have some leftover breadcrumbs from yesterday's pasta. Those would be good on the broccoli, I think. Add a little bit of crunch. The stream was lovely. That's so good. The roasted flavor of the almonds came through. Yes. I'm happy it worked. See, now you have your own little version of butter tarts. You were really upbeat. That's good. And you had good people. Let me just turn my MacBook off because the notification sound is annoying me. Hey, Steve. How are you? Happy Friday, man. Yeah, I was feeling like some Simpsons today. I was like, it's Friday. It's going to be a good day. Let's do this. That looks good too, Vion. What is that, chicken and rice? Or risotto? That looks really yummy, man. I guess it's kind of an Italian day, hey? It's a day for tomato sauce. Okay, guys, I had a pretty chill morning today had a really nice walk at the beach it was pretty refreshing the tide was out quite a bit though so it was a little bit stinky but it was still really nice to get over there haven't gone in probably a week now and then did some dusting and vacuuming keeping the house clean and a little bit of yoga and that's pretty much it did the recipes up for you guys so they're on discord as well Hello, Rook. How are you, man? 
Tomato risotto with baked chicken breast covered with matzo and tomatoes. So good. Cheese and tomatoes. Unbeatable combo. Okay, I don't know about unbeatable, but together, really good. <laughs> Dante, he's listening to music. Who cares, guys? Have a good one, man. See, I knew you guys would like this shirt today. I was like, this is very much a Friday shirt. You know what? I thought the skateboards were hot dogs as well at one point. And then I was like, oh, it's a skateboard. But maybe it's a hot dog skateboard. You never know. Worked until 3.30 in the morning? Rook. It better be worth it. That's all I'm saying. And then you went to work at 7. Man, you are committed. Whoever you're employed under, you are their strongest employee. They're hot dogs to go. Exactly. Hot dogs on wheels. Perfect. Hello, Eugene. Well, thank you for that. I will take that compliment today. Okay, guys. So lasagna, you, you know it's a bit of a process, especially if you're doing everything from scratch yourself. So I made up the other batch of pasta after the stream yesterday night. It rested overnight and then I just finished rolling it out before the stream. So now we just have the long pasta noodles not cut up or anything like that. And we're using that fresh pasta today in our lasagna. I know this is kind of a rare thing for people to eat it this way, but I promise you it makes it so much better. And we have made lasagna on stream before. Are you ready for this? So Tristan, some of you will know Tristan in the stream of viewers. He requested it. I think that was one of his first requests for me to make or one of the first few. Wednesday, February 21st was the last time we made lasagna on stream. And I pretty much based my recipe off of the one I used previously. But I think I ended up putting like mushrooms or something into the ricotta filling. I knew it was a little bit different, but it was really, really good. So we're gonna do a take two on that one. Why so many blender bottles? Well, we use two a day during the week for breakfast because we have a smoothie in the morning. And obviously Sam has his still, so that's why. And both of us used to go to the gym a lot, so protein shakes were a steady source of quick food. Okay, Rook, I'm gonna watch that afterwards. Or did you do that? You design and program that? That looks nuts. Who's Jim? That is so cool, Rook. I'm gonna watch the rest of that afterwards. Okay. So, I have not made our prep list up yet today, but obviously we will want to start with our lasagna. Yay for having our pasta already rolled out. And I did that because I'm also grinding the beef for the sauce fresh today on stream. So I knew that would be maybe a little bit too much to fit in all at one time. So that's what I did for my little trade. So thankfully the noodles are already done and we don't have to worry about them until we go to assemble the lasagna. Oh, you didn't even sidetrack me, man. I like to know what my viewers do because it's kind of a rare thing for you guys to like express what your job is. Some people don't want to do that and that's totally fine, but it's very interesting to see everyone's different professions kind of based on your personality that I've got to learn over the past however months. Okay, so I think the first thing we should do today is grind the beef. 
so we can start to make the bolognese sauce or the meat sauce. And then after that's ground up, we will have to cut the onion and carrot for the sauce base. You can also put in celery if you want. I don't have any and that is totally okay. We also have garlic going in there and some thyme and oregano and some fresh basil, which the basil won't be put in until the sauce is pretty much done. And I find just putting it in really fresh like that keeps the flavor nice and bright. Jalal, thanks for the follow. Welcome in. So pretty much a basic tomato sauce, which we're just adding meat to. And that I think we'll have to cook out for around 40 minutes. And then in the meantime, we can mix our ricotta cheese with egg. And that will keep it from kind of just falling apart on us. That really holds the lasagna together once it's all layered in there. We do have to shred some cheese for the topping. So I have soft matzo going on top. So it's going to get really ooey and gooey. And then also half a cup of just shredded Parmesan cheese. And that is all of the ingredients going into our lasagna. It's pretty traditional. Some people like to put like a bechamel or a white sauce in there too, but I don't think I need that today. Nice to meet you as well, Jalal. And then for the broccoli, that's probably obviously one of the easiest things to do today. Hi, Sammy. Hello. I'm gonna do probably 12-ish cups of broccoli already cut up into bite-sized pieces. And then we'll dress it with either chili garlic oil if you have it, or just plain olive oil is totally okay. That's a Sammy. That's a me. And then we'll zest and juice a lemon, which those things won't actually be put onto the broccoli until after it's cooked. If we do the lemon juice before it starts to cook, I think that it will just get too reduced and it will get too acidic. So you wanna put that on fresh and then kind of same thing with the zest. If you put that on at the beginning of the cook time, because we're charring the broccoli, I think the zest is just gonna burn in the oven. So we'll save that till the end. But what we will put with the broccoli is the capers. And I think I'm gonna leave them whole and hopefully they'll crisp up a little bit. He needs Sammy's job, he's always happy. Yeah, he works with my dad. They're hilarious together. It's a really good thing that they get along so well. Rook, you won, man. Those small victories. <laughs> okay, and like it says on the stream title, if we have time, we'll make up some blackberry jam from the blackberries that we picked yesterday, which I think we'll have time. So let me just write out the prep list quickly. Make the sauce. So to start the sauce, we have to brown the beef first in probably a couple different batches. If we overload the pot too much, it's not gonna brown. It's just gonna steam out. What's up, Mike? What's wrong? After we make the sauce, and that will have to cook out for 40 minutes. The beef will already be in there as well. That's kind of a key thing with bolognese is you cook the beef in the sauce for quite a long time at a low temp. I think after that, we might as well just get the broccoli ready to char. So prep the broccoli. I think all in all, this meal it will take a little bit of time guys so this is probably something you want to make on the weekend or like on a friday if you have time to do nothing after work let's say and you're feeling very energetic but yes very good saturday or sunday meal and i like making a big pan of lasagna because it lasts like up to a week in the fridge it's good eats left over 
Hey, Mama Reagan, how are you? Good to see you in here. Happy Friday. Okay, after we prep the broccoli, let's shred our cheese for the pasta or the lasagna. And then it won't even be time to put the lasagna together at that point. So why don't we say we will do the blackberry jam while we wait. And then once the lasagna is put together, you still need to bake it for around half an hour to 40 minutes until it's completely bubbling everywhere and the cheese is nicely melted and kind of golden brown. So keep that in mind as well, is yes, it takes a little bit of time to put together and it also takes a little bit of time to bake. I am good, mama. Happy that it's Friday, for sure. Okay, let's do a little bit of fun facts before we start. And then we will get rolling, guys. Okay, so lasagna. This actually refers to wide, flat pasta noodles. And it's actually possibly one of the oldest types of pasta. The name lasagna commonly refers to a dish made with several layers of pasta sheets, alternated with sauces and other ingredients, such as meat and cheese. But it was originally referred to as just the type of pasta, not the dish itself. So lasagna originated in Italy during the Middle Ages, and it's traditionally been ascribed to the city of Naples or Napoli. Yeah, Friday, we did it. The first recorded recipe was set down in the early 14th century Liber de Coquina, which is called the Book of Cookery, obviously in Italian. That original recipe was composed of fermented dough, so that's a little bit different, which was then flattened into a thin sheet, boiled, sprinkled with cheese and spices, then eaten with a wooden pick. Interesting. The traditional Napoli style lasagna is layered with local sausage, small fried meatballs, hard boiled eggs, ricotta, and mozzarella cheeses. And it's also sauced with a ragu. So this is like a very hearty meal. Nowadays, lasagna is most commonly made the Emilia-Romagna way, using a thicker ragu and bechamel sauce, and that's called lasagna al forno. Pastas from Emilia-Romagna and its capital, Bologna, are almost always served with the ragu, which is a thick sauce made from mirepoix, ground pork or beef, and tomatoes. <laughs> Yeah, you guys need to do a little switcheroo of recipes here. How do you eat with a pick? I don't know, man. It would have been tough times back then, Steve. It would be hard to eat pasta with a pick. Like a challenge, though. I'm down to try it. Maybe we'll try and eat our lasagna today with toothpicks. <laughs> See how it goes. Okay, so now I'm gonna blow your mind a little by telling you the actual origin of the word lasagna is derived from the Greek word leganon, which was the first known form of pasta. It was a very simple dish consisting of layers of pasta and sauce. So basically it got its name from the method it was made, not for the ingredients. Yeah, chopsticks, that would work, hey? That would just be so wrong, Steve. Let me eat my Italian food with these chopsticks. So nowadays, lasagna refers to both the ingredients used and the method of layering. We can even find variations using vegetables for the layers instead of the pasta. Keep in mind that the vegetarian versions always turn out a little bit more watery since there is no form of starch or pasta in there to soak up the liquid. Okay, now something a little fun as well. Okay. 
so broccoli. What's up? I made a home for food today. You don't need to say that. <laughs> like, I already smell it. You need to... Uh... You need to... Uh... Sammy's being weird, guys. Saying stream things that should not be said on stream. Say those in your own stream. Okay, so broccoli carrying on now is a result of careful breeding of cultivated brassica crops. So brassica, if you guys have been in here for a little bit, you know that that is used to describe any sort of kale or cauliflower or collard greens, Brussels sprouts, anything that's kind of cabbage related. And these were put in the Northern Mediterranean starting about the or sorry, the 6th century BC. So since the time of the Roman Empire, broccoli has been considered a uniquely valuable food among the Italians. So not a lot of people know that broccoli is an Italian thing. Broccoli was brought to England from Antwerp in the mid 18th century. And then it was first introduced to the US by Southern Italian immigrants but it didn't become widely popular until the 1920s. Oh, you were the person that was banned on here before. I think that might've been a mistake. I don't really know what happened with that, but welcome back. And hello, Matt, how are you? Okay, where are you going? I'm just going to the bike shop. Okay. See if you can look at my chain. Okay. Mike, 6th century, yeah. 6th century British Columbia? Done. Isn't Antwerp Belgium? It is. It is, Rook. Pardon? Do you need any Okay. It wasn't you this time, View. <laughs> Oh my god, Matt. He's going to get sexified for some booty later. You're super excited. Be careful out there, kids. Matt's on the prowl. Okay, let's get started. Start by grinding some meats. Your pirate treasure. Treasure. Exactly. And this is a good thing. This is still like a little bit frozen. I'm trying to read while going through the cabinet. You always want your whatever meat that you're gonna grind up fresh. To be a little bit frozen still. It'll just pass through the grinder way easier. Okay, we're back. I'm yet to say something. The haircut will cost monies, but it's worth it. Okay, so first step to prepare the grinder for the meat is all of the metal pieces have to go into the freezer. So they get really nice and chilled, and that way they can chill off while we cut up the meat and prep everything up. Guys, what are we doing? Are we winning and losing? Good job, Matt. You won. Only 
me 50 bones to go. Will you risk it, Vune? Will you risk it? <laughs> You're cheating on him tonight. That's the best. Who this in the house? Hey, Tris. Did you see my message on Discord that we're making your lasagna for Matt today? We're just prepping up. We're doing fresh ground beef in it, though, this time. Steve, you cut your own hair. That's very skilled of you. I'm impressed. Do you just buzz it, though? I like buzzing hair. It's really fun. You will not risk it, you. I like it. So in this bag, this is some beef short rib that we got that's just cut up like this. And then this other piece here, the bigger one, is a piece of ribeye. So really, really good cuts of beef going in here. And it's going to make the sauce really flavorful. Yeah, Matt, you probably should join the Discord. Oh, you haven't been on there. Okay, Tris. So whenever you're prepping your meat, don't mind my band-aid today, guys. When I was cleaning the food processor yesterday, I totally sliced my finger on the blade. I was like, oh, that's sharp. Okay. But it's not that bad. I just don't want to get anything in it right now. So let's go like around one inch cubes is the best. The odds were not in your favor. Oh, my arm here, that was a burn too. It's been a rough one, guys. Being mean to myself. And the burn, I just kept like kind of scratching off the scab by accident. I didn't want it to scar really bad, so I just put a band-aid on it so that it just heals under there and I don't have to worry. It's true. It is a scimitar. But it's so great for meat cutting. How are my knife throwing skills? I've thrown, I've done like that axe throwing thing before and I got a bullseye. Okay, look at that ribeye, yum. Oh, I did prick myself, but that's like up on my arm. <laughs> How did you know about that secret injury, Rook? I didn't realize that until today though. Okay. I think I'm just going to slice it this way and then slice it smaller after. So the best part of the ribeye is right here. That's called the rib cap. And it's really nice and marbled and tender. So whenever you're going out to buy a steak and you're choosing ribeye, look for a really nice rib cap on there. It's like one of the most expensive pieces of beef. Yeah, I probably wouldn't answer those things, Mike. If you're going to bring it up, if I ignore something, it's because I don't feel comfortable answering it. And so that's kind of the power that I have is I'm not really into starting stuff like that, I guess. I'm here to cook and teach you guys. Steve, you're thinking about taking schooling to become a meat butcher. Do it. It's really fun. And I'm pretty sure that's pretty good money. But seriously, dude, only take school if you're like really set about what you're gonna do. You don't wanna waste your money and then go to get a job after and be like, well, this isn't what I thought it was gonna be. So think good and hard about what you're going to take in school. 
And it, it does take some people longer than others. So don't feel like you're pressured. Okay, no worries, Mike. Cut the fat out, never tryst. We don't want no extra lean ground beef. We want that like good 70-30 blend. That's what makes everything taste good. Oh man, Elvin. How was your Friday? Your favorite blade yet. A sexy slab of meat. Guys, chat is nuts today. Barely catch up. Yeah, hide the ribeyes. They might disappear when Elvin's here. I like that, it rhymed. That worked well. A long sword? I don't have anything larger than this, guys. Maybe one day I'll get a sword. And that's just to prepare for the zombie apocalypse. Doggo, she's doing better, Trist. Her little limp thing doesn't really seem to be bothering her anymore. Okay, here's our meat for grinding. Looks good. And Doggo's doing better. We took her to the beach today. She had fun. Stick some dog butts, did dog things. that you made a new Instagram. Thanks, man. Yeah, I haven't gone on it since I saw that little update there, but I will give you a follow back for sure. <laughs> what did the goldfish say to the other goldfish in their tank? Do you know how to drive this thing? <laughs> oh my God. Is it frozen, the meat? It is like semi-frozen which is really good for grinding beef. Thank you for the follow, Kim13W. Welcome in. <laughs> you have a sword and I can prove it. If you're gonna get a sword yet, learn how to use it. Just so you don't find yourself in awkward situations with sword enthusiasts. Semi-frozen, yeah, like my soul, pretty much. You got it right. They are finished with the upstairs. Oh, well, almost, Trist. We just have to put the tiles up in the kitchen, but everything else is done and it looks really good. Pretty jelly, if I don't say so myself. Hey, our, uh, our grinder should be nicely cooled off by now. I know it didn't take us very long to cut that up, but I don't want to dilly dally today. Then my kitchen, yeah, exactly, Tris. Who knows when? I'm a pretty patient person and I'm happy with what I have, but of course I would like to get a little bit of a better setup down here, but I'm happy to wait for sure. I am okay. Elvin, you almost sued a chef. 
You would, if you would ever become a chef, you'd be a sous chef. Oh my gosh. The puns have started. Lock it away. <laughs> On behalf of the client. Okay. Okay, you were being serious. I thought maybe you were punning around. <laughs> we love you, Vian. It's true. Okay, first things first. Boop. In goes the auger. Or at least that's what I call it. Next up, the blade. And then the die. We're going like a nice medium grind. You don't want to go too big because then the sauce will just, it will almost be too big of chunks in the meat sauce and it just won't cook down the same. We want a nice medium grind here. Auger bit. Oh man, chef's doing bad things. It's nothing new, Elvin. Now, got that grinder set up. Make our little assembly line. Get our bowl in there. I think that's the best. Maybe even back down was better. Put it in our tray, our feed tray, I guess. Hey, Doc. It's midnight there in Germany, and you're usually tucked up by now. Aw. Sounds good. That is awesome. <laughs> don't. Don't do it, Trist. I'm just going to put a couple gloves on. Keeping clean in here. Yeah, credit all of the money. <laughs> okay, we're going on to a medium speed. You may want to turn down your headphones. I'm not sure how it comes through. The uh, mixer noise. Oops. A bad trap. <laughs> Trist, bat yourself. Holy 
Matt, there's only a couple of rooms you can go to now. I've honestly had worse people, so I don't know what you're talking about. I don't understand it. What do you do when we're not around, Matt? What do you do? So first things first, safety. Unplug the mixer before you even take your grinder attachment off. Oh no, Doc. Your wife had all of her teeth removed? Why? That's so unfortunate. And now? As soon as you saw Sammy, it was love at first sight. Wow, Matt. So you're just here for Sammy. See how it is, man. See how it is. Oh, just banned from the food streamers. Fair enough. And everyone has different stuff that they want out of their stream and their viewers, right? So... I'm happy that you found your place here. It's nice to be comfortable. You're here for boobs, food, and Sammy. Well, I know you can get two of those. The first one you can get in food form. But I don't think you'll see much <laughs> anyone else's. So the stuff that gets wrapped around is usually really stringy anyways, so I'm totally okay with that. There's always this little bit that you're going to toss out, but it's mostly just like connective and stringy tissue that you wouldn't want in your ground beef anyways. So don't feel bad. Uh, ribeye is really good to grind, it's true, but it is pretty expensive, like you said. I think it's worth it though. Okay, done with the glovies. I would say that was like the hardest part of the stream today, for sure. Yeah, own it up to my feminine side. I know it's a weird thing, right? Okay, I'm just packing the mixer away so we have a little bit more room for prep. And then we're gonna get saucy. Have some fun. Guys, do you think Sammy will come home with ears? Who knows? Or maybe we'll make some blackberry mojitos. What does that sound though? <laughs> no, Trist. You need fat to survive, man. You can't just eat food without fat. Okay, meat worms have been made. 
Let's just put this to the side. We're gonna be uh, starting to cook it. Actually, you can probably start that now while we start to cut the sauce. So the veggies will be fried after the beef. So two cans of tomatoes. I use the diced ones, but if you want a more smooth sauce, then for sure you can start with already like blitzed up tomatoes. And the veg we're gonna use today, like I said, onion and carrot. You can also add celery to make a mirepoix. The ribeye must have been 30 bucks. So we got a full ribeye, or Sammy picked it up the other day from Costco. I think it was around 200 bucks, maybe a little bit less. So yeah, no, I would say that little piece was probably around $15. It wasn't that expensive. Okay. Blackberry lemonade. That sounds so good. Use tomato paste, not even diced. Yes. Get the wine. Get the wine. There's not even that much left. Or do we want to go red wine? There's more of that. There's like half of that guy left. We might have to get a little saucy. Okay, like I said, before we start our veg, we might as well start to brown our beef in our pot here. So let's go like medium high heat and we'll probably do this in maybe three or four different batches. And that way it'll brown up really nice, render out that fat. And then hopefully there'll be enough beef fat in the pot to saute our veg in. So we'll be creating a lot of flavors by browning all of our ingredients prior to adding our tomatoes in. The whole peeled tomatoes work better. Yeah, those ones are really good too. I don't know why I never use those ones. Maybe I should switch. I already changed your recipe. It's true, man, I did. Can't be mad at that. I'm like literally using almost all of the same ingredients. Pulse! Five months in a row, man. Thank you. Fellow Canadian that I'm so happy to have part of our little onion squad. And guys, Polish is also a streamer as well. Are you still streaming primarily like old school games? You guys should go uh, give him a follow if you're into that kind of thing. Pretty entertaining. I'm gonna go in with our big wooden spoon. You're saltier than sardines. Oh my goodness. Matt, you'll be okay. You're all retro, sometimes indie. That's awesome. <laughs> Good, you read it. Of course, still paying attention to you. Our pot's not quite hot yet, so we will carry on with our veg prep. I have to say, having a band-aid on this index finger feels so weird. It's like very immobilizing. And like, I don't know why, because the cut doesn't even really hurt. Canadian for life. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> Vune, I will not have any of this. Not today, man. It's Friday. Oh, 
Oh, we got a sense of humor in here. I just don't think we have the same sense of humor that you do. Oh God, the waterworks are starting already. Guys, did you know onions are actually really good for like detoxifying obviously your eyes and like your sinus and stuff? So it's actually a good thing that it makes you cry. So it like flushes out anything that might be built up in there. Forced cry, sometimes a good thing. <laughs> yeah, get the mouse trap. Ah! Okay, let's start to put a little bit of our meat in here. Yeah, you want that sizzle right away. And you only want one layer. That's good. So it looks like we'll have four or maybe even five batches of beef to brown. I'm just gonna run some water over our grinder in the sink as well. Why did the turtle cross the road to go to the shell station? That was actually such a cheesy and hilarious one. Cheese, I love cheese. <laughs> a snippet of the Twilight movies, oh my gosh. Sunny. How was that? Too much money. Too much money to fix the chain? No, the chain's technology in the Walmart parking lot watching Kate cook. <laughs> I love that. Okay, let's get into this. So all of our veg, we're going to small dice, have some nice delicate cut vegetables for our sauce. Viewed is the picture of repression order in Stern. <laughs> Schadenfreude. <laughs> I love it. Our crazy camera. Okay. Let's get into this. Honestly, I need to uh, put my knife on the steel first. Hear that like, I don't know. I can tell by the sound and the feel of my blade going through something when it needs just a little touch up. So let's do it. Make our lives easier. Just your unlimited data plan. <laughs> I wish we had that here, Shadowlin. It doesn't exist in Canada. Just like poverty internet here. Okay, I shouldn't even say that. That was so bad. I take that back. But you guys know what I mean. Okay, careful when you get to the end of the onion. I usually put my index finger onto it, but I can't really grip it. Trying my best. The struggle is real. Armored with the 50 biddies. Thank you and welcome in. I hope your day is well. Metal shards on the cutting board. No, Trist. I wiped them off. Look. They're on the cloth. Come on, man. You know better than that. Powder Japanese blade. What? 
guys are nuts. Yeah, low steel. What are you guys on today? Very feisty. Now I'm going to get emotional. It's Friday. <laughs> even argue with that rook i can't happy to see you guys having fun in here because i know most of you have had a pretty busy week yeah i'm a little bit emotional Ugh. the tears hey you hear that sizzle we're kind of getting some brown in action over here She, she says, I am here for the carrot. Yeah, is it Friday? Who knows? Do your best and forget the rest. Oh my God, P90X, don't bring me back. It's a good motto though, I will say it. The meteor showers, yeah, are those this weekend? Yeah, y'all know what to do. And now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna switch out to a slotted spoon so that we can leave some fat in the pot. Hopefully. Go back to P90X. Oh my god. Doesn't even actually look like there's much fat being rendered out in here. Which is shocking because that ribeye was pretty fatty. Putin rook? Putin. You always thought poutine was something sexual. Matt, I could say something bad, but I won't. Don't you think most things are sexual? That's just how you are. Tony Horton, yeah, the man is nuts. He's almost 60 and he works out like every day. But he's in the best shape of his life. Who knows, he might be on steroids, so. Wait, how did you ruin poutine? How many layers are we doing? I was planning on like three or four layers. How many do you typically do, Matt? Just 
call me bitch. <laughs> Don't take it too far, man. This is the stream for you. You can't get overexcited and be rude. Let's kick his ass. Matt, you're cruising for a bruising. Okay, all of our carrots are cut down to the same size as the onion. <laughs> Who's got the pitchforks? I don't know, but I have all the swords. All the swords in the world. Toss him across the room. That'll teach him a lesson. No, oh, man, it's all good, Matt. Just don't try to uh, refrain from saying stuff like that because I don't have a rated R channel. I am open to teaching young ones as well if they behave. Or if some people have families watching. Got to keep that in mind as well. Yeah, only behind my back, exactly. Now I'm just imagining the fight scene from Anchorman. Between all the different news stations, it would get violent really fast. We got some wild ones in here. I know it. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Mike. Just call us assholes instead. It's not as derogatory. It's true. What if my grandma's watching, guys? She would take her pottery bowl away and that would be it. No more awesome pasta dishes in the pottery bowl. We don't want that. This is madness in dog. I know, I'm sorry. I'm one of those people that loves carrot and tomato sauce. But some people are like so strict on not having them at all. I like the sweetness and the color that it gives. And maybe it lends a little bit of help to texture as well. Makes the sauce a little more thick. Okay, next up we're working on our garlic. Look at the maven. I know. How cool is that? Okay, one more batch after that. Hey, 
Sit back, how are you? Gotta play chauffeur. Okay, see you, Shadowlin. Maybe you'll be back, maybe you won't be. Carrots add the sweet flavor if your tomatoes are sweet enough. Yeah, it's not needed. We do have some sauce tomatoes growing outside, but they won't be ready until later in the fall. So I'm gonna keep with my uh, canned tomatoes for now. So I would say like three cloves of garlic. These are massive, so I'm only gonna use two. <laughs> yeah, it's good to know. Hey, Alvin, we have no Italians in stream yet. Because otherwise, I would have already gotten yelled at. For what? Using carrots in the sauce. <laughs> yeah, Sammy, are you back with booze? Uh, yeah. Rook asked. Yeah. <laughs> he said, yeah. Hello, Maimon, how are you? How did the chicken turn out yesterday? You didn't already have a chicken. No, that was yesterday. Oh, was it yesterday? You don't like carrots and sauce, yeah. You're one twentieth Italian. Mar Marcella Hazan, yeah, rolling in her grave. Well, here's the good news. I'm not Italian, so I think it's okay if I use carrots. So I'm already looked down upon for trying to recreate their food anyways. I'll take it. I will take the stern glares from up above. It was delicious. Yay. Yeah, she did the chicken dish that I did for you, Rook. Yeah, we'll definitely deglaze with some red wine, but not until the veggies are cooked as well. And for the garlic, I'm just going to slice it. I don't have to mince it because it's going to cook for a little bit and break down on its own. So you don't have to go through all of that effort. That's the good thing about sauce. Everyone commented on how moist and beautiful it was. That is so good, Maimon. I'm glad you're enjoying the circulator. Marcella wasn't right about everything. She advised mixing butter with oil to raise the smoke point. What? She still could have outcooked you yet. Yeah, we'll just leave it at that. Okay, that looks good. Nice and chunky. Or like big pieces of garlic in my sauce. Garlicky fingers. Oh no, Steve. <laughs> We're on a losing streak again, guys. Hey, second last batch.
See? Beer. Look. I brought beer. I gotta check this out. thinking about alcohol. What's going on here? We haven't cracked open the blackberry wine yet. Maybe later with dinner. Blackberry wine and blackberry jam. Hell yeah. Sammy comes Ooh. back with some beer. Oh. Holy. Garlic, a.k.a. a beating stick. What? This is what I'll bring to the fight, guys. There's no one beating. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Ouch. Help. Liz, send help. Ever had Founders Reserve Porto? I do love port. I don't know if I've had that specific one though, but yeah, I I do in, enjoy a good port after dinner. And that would probably be the main reason why I go to Portugal at some point in my life. Yeah, abort, abort mission. Everyone walk away from the table. Okay, I'm gonna grab some thyme out of the fridge. Wow, Elvin. He's like, don't tell me how to live my life. I'm staying. Now you got nothing. Oh, and dried oregano. Is the other spice going in here? And that's one that's one herb plant. I don't know why I have I have it planted here. Because it does grow, grow pretty well. I can't even talk. I missed a winning streak. Oh, well, I'm happy for you guys. I guess maybe that's how it works is I leave and you guys start to win. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it's Sammy. Sammy has that good luck. Hey, this is nice and brown. Once we scrape this, the veggies are going right in. says the beer is effing good. Cheers, guys. Cheers, Sammy. Mmm. Was it like sour blueberry? You got it. Kettle sour blueberry. <laughs> Boom. That palette. Okay, let's get this stuff in. He hasn't. That's what he's going out to do right now, Chris. Yeah, it's not smoky here, Maimon. Uh, it is. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. I haven't gone out of soup yet, so I don't really know. Mm -hmm. We're in our little soup bubble you still. Oh, holy then. <laughs> yeah, all of the viewers have gambling problems. But at least it's not real money. 
get this nicely coated in oil. We got our garlic still aside here and for our dried oregano, we're gonna use a teaspoon's worth. And then I thought I would throw in some really nice fresh thyme. And I'm not even gonna take the thyme off of the stem. I think I'm just gonna throw in these couple of sprays. And then as the sauce cooks, the leaves will fall off of the stems and you'll be able to just pull the stem out afterwards. So that'll save you time for preparing your lasagna as well. It's a little shortcut. You can think of one function Sammy has. What? What the heck? Oh guys, speaking of tomatoes. Look it, it's our first one, baby mayo. Kind of like heart shaped, I guess, or just weird shaped. But it looks really nice. I'm excited to eat it. Get more caffeine, Rook. Get in it, man. And I'm gonna bring some wine over to our pot. OMG, where's the celery? Embryo tomato, it's so true. I don't have any celery in the house, pool turd, so we're not doing a mirror plot today. Starts with ER. I'm not even gonna guess. Is it bad, Trist? The tomato needs more time. Betty said she wanted to pick it today. I was gonna leave it for a couple days, so that's what happened. It will be okay though, guys. There's many more tomatoes to come. Okay, I guess while we wait, we can mix up our ricotta cheese with some egg. And that will be one of the layers in the lasagna. And then that's pretty much it, guys. Once the sauce is going, we have to wait for that to cook out and then we'll cool it down for, let's say, maybe 10 minutes. And then assemble our lasagna and then bake it. Carrots and no celery. Yeah, what are we doing with our lives today? Just trying to scrape off some of that, those beefy pieces that are stuck on the bottom still. But those will get loosened up when we pour the wine in. Just you don't want to you want to make sure that they don't burn. You did grow potatoes and tomatoes. You failed. You gave them too much nitrogen, and they were all leaf and no fruit. Crazy. Use the Creole seasoning blend from way back on Etouffee. And scrambled eggs. What? Oh, that yeah. sounds good. Okay, I will go grab the ricotta, guys. good in here. Hell yeah. You thought that they were civilized. This is a pretty old ricotta. I don't know. July 4th. Let's just get rid of that. It's not like really moldy. So this is what we're going to use. You can use this or even like a cottage cheese works as well. But I think the ricotta is just nice and smooth. It blends in better with the lasagna compared to the cottage cheese. 
which is a little bit more like tougher curds. Sausage and shrimp gumbo. Rook, We're coming over. Betty would always make a pretty good gumbo for us when we were younger. That was one of her go-tos and she would do sausage and shrimp as well. Chef said he's going to cook with marijuana in October when it's a thousand percent legal. Oh, I already have started planning, Tris. I'll be good, man. Don't you fret. Beautiful. We appreciate you. Thanks for the love, man. Okay. So let's go down to our board. We have a couple ingredients left for our sauce there. And we need two cups of ricotta. And I said two large eggs beaten up into there. But I'm only going to use one duck egg. So that's really only one and a half. I'm just going to rinse my knife off quickly from the garlic before it gets too stuck on there. One egg to rule them all. Please don't roll away. Okay, I think I smell some caramelization happening. I was right. Maybe a couple more minutes and then we'll throw in the herbs and spices glaze. Oh, and the garlic too, and then we'll be well on our way. So we'll whip up our egg first. Thanks for the follow. Welcome in. Yeah, still a good idea to check. It's true. My caramelization senses are tingling. Pretty much, that's how it goes, Elvin. So two cups of ricotta, which is half of this big container full. This container is four cups. AKA one liter. This ricotta looks delicious. Yeah, for sure, Vune. We understand you, man. And I think a lot of cannabis users don't just like use it recreationally. Like it actually helps with sleep and anxiety and all that stuff. But there are a lot of uneducated people out there and obviously the younger generations probably don't have that much anxiety or sleep issues. So they definitely do it more recreationally. Okay, so look how nice and fluffy the egg made the ricotta. That's what we're looking for. So now we can set that aside and come back over to our sauce. Okay, that's browning up real quick. Turn that down a touch. Add our garlic. 
Yeah, the ricotta here is pretty dry, man. And it probably depends on the brand that you buy. I like to make my own for sure. But it just doesn't make sense cost-wise if you use so much milk anyways. Okay, saute our garlic for a couple seconds. Put our herbs in there. Did I ever work as a pastry chef? Yeah. So I was like Sammy's pastry chef. Because I didn't want to be sous chef there or else we would never be able to go anywhere together. So I took the pastry chef position. And also because no one wanted to make desserts at the restaurant when we opened. So I just took that on myself. There's our oregano. And it was really fun, I have to say that, Elvin. I like to play around with my food. You guys know that. Play with different flavors. Push that sweet and savory thing. Okay, let's deglaze with some wine. How much? I would say minimum a half cup. I'll probably go with a cup though. Or two. <laughs> and then we are going to scrape off any brown bits on the bottom of the pot before we add our beef back in. Open up our tomatoes and then that's pretty much it for the next 40 minutes for our sauce yeah I really like adding the egg to the ricotta I know it sounds kind of weird at first but it really helps to keep everything together when you go to serve the lasagna later it doesn't just fall apart dry ricotta it's better for pastries yeah well, you know what? If your ricotta is too wet when you buy it, you could also strain it yourself at home with just some cheesecloth. Hello, Lemon. How are you? You never bake, Rook. That's what Sammy always said. But he has started baking recently. I think he's better than he thinks he was. Bonjour from France. <laughs> from Sunderland. Good one, AJ. Ola from Portugal. Welcome in, everyone. Welcome to the stream. I'm just putting together a quick white version bolognese for our lasagna. I only said white version because of the carrot debate. And I like carrots in my tomato sauce. So I will put up with the heckling. Oh, you've been in the whole time lurking. Well, that's good. Why didn't anyone want to make pastries with Sammy? What? Sammy has started baking yet. <laughs> I love it. Hey, tomatoes going in. Meat based 
I know. I don't know if anybody beats us. <laughs> and now we just need to bring this up to a simmer. And we're not going to season it until right before we serve it. Because as it cooks down, the salt and all the flavors are going to concentrate. And you might end up with a sauce that's too salty. And then you would have to thin it out afterwards anyways. So you did all that work for nothing. So stuff like sauces, season it right at the end. At least that's my opinion. <laughs> you misunderstood the dessert course. I think I missed something too. <laughs> Vune. A stray butter tart has found its way to my room. It's attacked me. I've been left with no other option than to destroy it with gusto. Protect yourself, Vune. That's all you gotta do, man. You don't have to reason with us. We understand what you're going through. Okay. I think I'm gonna put this ricotta mixture into the fridge for now. And I will put the other container as well. Just gave it a quick taste. It's really nice and creamy. And we are moving on to prepping up our broccoli for roasting way later in stream. And you know what, guys? I think I want to prep up our cheeses for the lasagna later, too. Let's do that now. And that way we don't have to do it later. we have today butter tart number six so proud of you right now you're making me want a trillionaire bar though yeah what is self-control so we got some amazing fresh matzah to kind of just tear apart to put on the top of the lasagna today so it's gonna be really cheesy like obnoxious, obnoxiously cheesy and gooey, which I love. And then we're just gonna shred some Parmesan cheese as well for something a little bit more salty. So let's do a cup of matzah. Should be good. Honestly, this Band-Aid's bugging me can't do it. So do you see that? Do you see that little, little cut there? I don't know if I can help it focus. That's all it is. So I'm taking my bandaid off just because it's making me upset anyways. It's just going to fall off. It's not bleeding or anything. I'm good. So now let's just uh, pick off chunks of the matzah. Lemon, you add carrots to your sauce sometimes. Yeah, the natural sweetness, exactly. And I like the color too, when it goes almost more orange. Where did I get my cheese? <laughs> Once again, this cheese was from Costco. Show you that velo fresh matzo it's really really good for both pasta and pizza yeah start over everything's contaminated oh it's true i am cutting a lemon right away Vune. we'll just cauterize it with the acid just put crazy glue on it yeah i thought about that too Six sticks of butter creamed with two cups of sugar. Oh my god. That's all we want, guys. 
Okay, I might have to have a piece of cheese. Gotta make sure it's still good. It's still good. It's really, really buttery. That's why I love this. But it's actually only 20% fat, which is shocking because it's so, so creamy. I just noticed that our sauce is simmering. I'm just gonna turn it down. We just want that slow simmer. You don't want to reduce the liquid too quickly. Yeah, just drink more. If you say so, Rook. Oh my god. Face hole. You guys are killing me. Onto the parmesan. Yes, yeah, 643 servings per package, exactly. Oh, you know what? Thanks for the rind, whoever left this in here. I'm gonna say, Betty, you know, you guys know where this is going. I'm not even gonna say anything. I'm gonna walk over and do that. And that is gonna lend so much flavor into our sauce, and it's not actually going to break down, because it's tough. But we're going to get a really nice earthy flavor from that. So always save your parm rinds. Now you know. And I am just going to shred some parm. So we're almost done this one, hey? But it's okay. We have the 24 month one in the fridge waiting for us. Your way is retarded. <laughs> Views like I am the master of butter tarts. They are now German butter tarts. They're no longer Canadian. Yeah, I don't often get the chance to put a Parmesan rind into my sauce, so I'm pretty excited for this. And I'm trying to not shred my fingers off right now. That's it. Yo, did Matt leave? Whoa, there he is. Speak of the devil. I was like, it's been really quiet in here. Maybe him and Sam are just chatting on the side. Who knows? Oh, Sammy says he's working. How dare you say something? Okay, we're just gonna clean off this whole rind. We're using all the parmigiano into the lasagna. And then this piece is going into the sauce too. And did you guys know that Italy only sends, sends out or exports their like, worst cheese for the rest of the world you don't actually have access like in north america to proper parmesan is they actually keep all that for themselves and i don't blame them why wouldn't you they're the ones that created it i just think it's pretty funny though that most of us don't really know better You've been watching me ruin your recipe? Wow. Are you upset, man? Okay, this is going in too. Say goodbye. Brooke, yeah, you need a bone transplant. Oh, 
Costco pulls in the good stuff? Let's hope so. I mean, 24 months, that's pretty good, I think. I'm sure it's still good, but it's definitely not the best. America makes lots of cheese. Is it not on par with Italy's? Well, as far as like the Parmesans and stuff, I would say no. I think it's give points is the command if you guys want to donate some points. Give points and then maybe the username or give points the amount and then the username. Yeah, Trist, you're number one. The bard. Where did the bard go? <laughs> Purple butter. Okay, what am I missing? You guys are nuts. Being born to a ruling emperor led to preferential inheritance. It was called born in the purple. You're crazy. It's okay. I love the caps armored. I was like, you feel very strongly about this, I see. <laughs> wow, Rook. Okay, this stuff's going into the fridge now as well. Let's listen to Nelly. I like me some Nelly. It's true. Okay, time to get into the veggie portion. I know, guys, the boring part. But we need it. You didn't mean to yell. I know. You're okay. Whoa, Elvin. Coming back. Come back, kid. He's been uh, roasting. <laughs> Cheese in a can. Yeah, America makes great cheddars, but as far as like a Parmesan goes, I don't think they're the ones that you want to look to. They also make great aged Gouda's and stuff in America, both Canada and the US. Okay, I think that might be enough broccoli. Pile of trees. Pendleton walk time before it started raining the next 10 days. Really, Rook? I didn't even know that Texas was capable of having rain that much. Are we dissing Velveeta? Oh my goodness. Can you remember the last time I've had Velveeta? We're gonna save these broccoli ends for Posh. Let's see if she comes down. And I'm just gonna trim some of this up. But most of it should be good. And then we'll just do nice bite-sized pieces with the florets. I think you just do leaderboard command, Tris. Because we're putting this under the broiler, we're not going to line the pan so we don't want to light the parchment paper on fire. Nope. Not doing it. No one beats the Velveeta. You'll take the Manchego. Leave the rest to us. Thanks, Indog. You've never been a fan of broccoli. You eat it, but you don't appreciate it. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, it can be pretty underwhelming. 
in some cooking preparations. But I think when it gets charred or browned really nicely, it takes on like a whole new flavor. And I also think a lot of people might overcook their broccoli and then it's really not appealing to eat because it's just mushy. So doing it under the broiler like this keeps it a little bit crunchy, but also gives you that caramelized flavor that you're looking for. There's a whole other world of cheese you know nothing about and can't, afford, can't even afford to play in. Yeah, that's true as well. You like blue, pepper jack, cheddar, and cottage. About as far as your experience goes. That's still pretty good. I mean, some people don't even stray from, let's say, Kraft Singles or American cheese. And the fact that you've had blue cheese and like it, that kind of sets you up for being able to like most of the other like stinky, expensive cheeses that are made around the world. Asian polar bear. Yeah, so much broccoli. Well, this is the thing with veggies too. When you're gonna put them under high heat, they do tend to shrink a bit. They're gonna lose some of their moisture. So I always prep just a little bit extra. giving Vune nothing. I love that. Okay, I'm just going to transfer this over and then we'll toss everything up on the sheet pan. <laughs> you two are the funnest to banter back and forth in chat. It's a good brotherly love. Broccoli everywhere. So the broccoli won't be cooked until let's say 10 minutes before we plan to eat. So that's a really easy one. And then the lasagna has to go in obviously around five o'clock because you have to let it even sit a little bit before you cut it. Otherwise it might just fall apart on you. <laughs> yeah, Tris, switch back to your other account. Give all the points. Although I don't know if they'll be there, Tris. Because the points are only through stream elements, which I switched probably about halfway through the stream. So I'm going to use chili garlic oil. It's really nice and orange, literally just chilies and garlic cooked with vegetable oil until it's broken down. And then you blend it all up and let it sit for, I would say at least a week for it to really absorb the flavor. So that's what I'm dressing my broccoli with. But like I said earlier, plain olive oil is just as good. If you wanted to add some chili flakes and some minced garlic to this, and then you'll have pretty similar flavor. So let's start with the oil and that way everything else that we put onto here will be able to stick onto the broccoli. Okay, I think that's good. So we have our capers here that we want to take out of the brine. So we kind of just squeeze the brine out as you take them out. <laughs> it's not chilly. Actually, it was in the fridge. So I'm glad you asked. 
that definitely should be kept in the fridge. Yes, the jam. That's what I'm trying to like hustle and finish all the stuff for dinner so that we can make the jam and then I'll just can it probably after the stream. And I am putting just a couple teaspoons of capers. They're really briny and pretty salty. So keep that in mind. But I think they're really great to use to season vegetables. And they're great to pair with any Italian food. Yum. really good. Okay, let's grab a touch of salt, just a touch, and some pepper. You love me some cavers, yes, Elvin. So good. Capers are green peppers? No. Capers are a flower bud that is picked before it opens and then they're put into a salt brine. I think there might be acid too. Capers, water, salt, vinegar. That's it. So because our capers are salty, let's go on the lower side of the salt to begin with. Because we can always add later on, but we can never take it away. That's the worst part. And now I'm just going to toss this up. We can zest our lemon early on and juice it as well. And then that will be used to garnish later. And I'm going to hope that the capers get a little bit kind of fried with the oil smells really good and you always want one even layer of vegetables when you're roasting that way they will get even color and they won't really steam too much on top of themselves I'm sorry. Thanks for the follow. You left a window open with someone's stream, had it muted, and completely forgot about it. Suddenly gifted sub. I think that might have happened to me once too. It was like, oh, all right. I'm here now. <laughs> a community gift sub. Oh, so that's a new thing, Vyun is the community gift subs, I think they can do up to a hundred or maybe unlimited gifted subs to a certain community. So someone with a lot of dough can be like, let's gift a hundred people subs that are watching my stream right now that are not subbed already. It's nuts. I don't really know how it works, but I saw it in someone else's stream the other day I think a person did like 50 gifted subs oh actually I think it was Dr. Lupo mmm grilled cheese honestly something so simple and I don't think I've ever done that on stream so I am so down <laughs> Mike thank you for that I guess I'll take it You finally got Twitch today. 
You found five people to follow, one radio host, the press, and three Twitch cooks. It's a start, exactly armored. Yeah, a lot of dough. Give us the dough. Okay, broccoli can go aside. Maybe chill in there until we're ready to char it up. So let us prep our lemon. We'll do the zest and the juice in two separate containers. Just because I don't think I'll add all of the lemon juice. Do you mean Twitter? Maybe Twitter. That would make more sense. Hey, helicopter. Welcome in. How is it going? I'm just going to put a couple things away real quick, guys. Guys, the blackberries are coming out. Say away. 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 fresh basil we're gonna chop up later on though and then we'll put that into the bowl of maize or ragu whatever you want to call it <laughs> armored I do mean Twitter chicken and rice now you're gonna make grilled cheese someone literally just asked for grilled cheese that's weird helicopter you're starting a restaurant hybrid food truck within a year based on grilled cheese and you've never had it before. You might want to do a little bit more research then. Just saying. You're back. <laughs> Rook's back. Yeah, we have a Twitter. <laughs> Okay, let's zest our lemon. Okay, this is the way that I always zest. And then this is the way that chef says to zest. Because apparently you can control what you're zesting more because you can see it. So this is what I have to do at work, guys. But I think it's slower. That's just me but I can't say anything. Just say yes chef, guys, that's it. Yes chef, we chef. Whatever you need, chef. You need tips on bread cheese fillings? Oh, grilled cheese, endless possibilities. Definitely can be a money maker, but you also want to make sure that you have quality ingredients if you're going to do something so basic. Whereas your bread has to be amazing. Your cheese always has to be fresh. And whatever fillings you make have to be unique, I think. Just because a grilled cheese is easy for someone to make. So for them to pay you to make it, it's got to be something a little bit different. But then again, you will have those people that are like, I just want the classic grilled cheese. Yeah, new zesting technique. It's a little bit hard to get used to at first. Is your power on here? Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, she came and just said that. Okay. Yeah, I was in the fridge. I was in the fridge and the light went out. Guys, I'm not crazy. I was like, the fridge door is open. Yeah, now you don't fucking shut down. Yeah. We're staying strong, guys. It is pretty windy out, though. It is really windy. I'm gonna guess another if, uh, tree if, fell. If Caitlin disappears, it's because the tree fell down. Onto the power lines. Yeah. <laughs> Benefit of living on an island, guys. Uh, yeah, my computer shut down twice. In the last you do this? Elvin, you do it this way? Oh my gosh, maybe I was doing it the wrong way the whole time. So, so she Yeah, perfect works. simmer, hey? It's got that little oil slick on there. It's exactly what you want. Yes. Yeah, mayonnaise, rook, life-changing man. Spread the mayo on the outside of the bread for the grilled cheese. Unreal. It will change your life. You don't need no butter on the outside. Yeah, when I was in the fridge, the lights flickered. I was like, Sam, did the <laughs> power just go out? Well, it's super windy, so. I'm surprised you Okay, there's our zest for the broccoli. Let's just give this a little roll. Loosen the juices up. Whatever you make with your grills. Whatever you make your grills with. I love that. You and your dad are at home. Your mom and sister went to your cousins. You looked at pictures of your relatives yeah. from 1960. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That is always fun. A little family history yeah. helicopter. Oh, okay. Pasta tomato soup with grilled cheese. That sounds lovely. I'm using this so that it doesn't hurt my cut. Grilled cheese, thinly sliced onion, and garlic salt. That sounds so good. Betty just left Trist, but I will let her know. Maybe she'll pop in later. Do I want to do... I don't think we need to juice this other lemon for the broccoli, but we will probably need it. Okay, it doesn't want to say anyways. We'll probably need it for the blackberry jam. But half a lemon should be sufficient to pour over the broccoli. Like I'll probably only use half of that amount. It's like an eighth of a cup maybe. You were just eggs. Yeah, exactly. Helicopter, that's so funny. Puts life into perspective for you then. Okay, so I wanna chop a little bit of herbs for our broccoli to garnish as well. Keep it nice and fresh. So let's do I'm gonna steal a little bit of the fresh basil to put into our chopped herbs for the broccoli. That way everything kind of marries together. The mayo and butter combo works better. See, I've never done the combo. Cause then that just seems like too much effort. Pasta tomato soup, yum. Wow, Tris. View left us for sushi day. Now he's a multitasker. And plus, people are allowed to watch whoever they want. It's not like, I am on. You may only watch Kate. Or else. We got some chivers. I think I want to do a little bit of tarragon as well. I have a bunch of it and definitely need to use it up. Another awesome herb on here would be dill, but I don't have any left. Like This is a very large amount of tarragon, and it's quite strong, so we're only going to use that little bit. Grill with mayo and then dip in butter. That's how you get a heart attack, but that's also how you live your life to the fullest. <laughs> Okay, let's get into it. 
grab one more container out. Actually, we can totally just add the herbs in with the lemon zest because I'm going to put all of this zest in. It's about a tablespoon's worth. We're just gonna go fine chop for all this stuff. Fair enough, Yoon. Yeah, that would stress me out too. Trying to do all the things at once. butter dip would be like for those crazy people <laughs> Rook, who are just there to get fattened up i mean you're eating a grilled cheese it's high in fat anyways so you're definitely not there for diet food you're from india ah that's very cool and you're opening your grilled cheese truck there Get into our tarragon. You're new to breads, cheese, and pasta. Yeah, that's very fair then. Well, one of the most important things for a grilled cheese is to make sure that you get cheese that melts really nicely. So that when you pull it apart, it gets really nice. sure you pair it with something that's a little bit more soft the hunger service he's crying on stream what like a good cry or a bad cry what happened to la pizza and burgers are like 10 years old wow The sound of this simmering back here, very peaceful. I should just record this and do my yoga to the simmering sound of bolognese. Epic. I'm gonna give it a little stir as well. Seven hundred US in donations and subs. Well then for sure I would be crying too. That's nuts, guys. Speaking of donos, we don't actually have a top donator for the week yet. So if you guys are thinking of something you want me to make on stream, the bar is set pretty low here for donos. go as low as a buck and be able to request something for next week. You guys are lucking out on this one. He's broken. I love that. That's what Twitch is all about. You never know what is going to happen to your day. So consistency is for sure key. Always something new and different every time I'm on here and plus you never know who's watching or who you're gonna meet yeah chivers I picked a bunch the other day and I haven't used them yet I thought this would be great to garnish with oh you had thunderstorms yesterday Vune. I love thunderstorms I miss that
see you guys. It's like clockwork. Put something out here. Anonymous. Donating five bucks to whoever that is. Honestly, thank you so much. And they're definitely not needed. We can go a week with no donos, but then that means I get to pick all the meals. You guys get no power. You miss the Asian rain. It was a really nice feeling when I was in Southeast Asia. The rain there after it being really hot. Thank you for the tip, whoever that was. Feeling the love. Happy Friday to you. Trist, it was you and it never posted your name? No. Really? Yeah, it drizzles a bit there and everyone panics. That's hilarious, Ian. Trist, was it actually you and something went wrong? remember back about like one of the first requests that you did I wasn't sure if lasagna was one of the first ones but that's awesome that you're in here for round two of it well thank you Tris you want to see some burritos now he wouldn't lie exactly <laughs> But it's just confusing to me that it didn't show up. That sucks. Technology's nuts though though. Okay, you wanna do burritos next week? Did we do burritos once already? I forget, but I am so down to do them again. Love me a good burrito. No man, don't even worry about it. I know that it was you. The trust is there. I don't need proof. I did tacos instead. Okay, fair enough. Okay, there's our herbs and our lemon zest for our broccoli. Coming up on 445. I think we're doing pretty good. So let's get into our blackberry jam. I'm still going to keep those aside for doggo. I have a feeling that she'll be in here at some point today during stream. So she gets some broccoli snacks. Hello, steampunk. How are you? <laughs> yeah, my fellow food nerds, greetings. Thanks, oh crap. Yeah, I do enjoy the rain now. Hello, chef, how are you? Ah, I wanted to make the tortilla. Making tortilla for burritos, though, is really hard. There's a fine line between getting it thin enough and too thin that'll actually just fall apart. Especially with masa, which it's a little bit more dry than a flour tortilla. Maybe if I did a mix of masa and flour, I might be able to make some like awesome huge tortillas for a burrito. <laughs> Chef. Tired as fudge. Okay. Blackberry jam recipe coming out of this book. Saving the season by Kevin West. And it actually just goes right in to the recipe here. And the way the recipe is, so you need two and a half pounds of blackberries two tablespoons of fresh squeezed lemon juice so you always need acid if you're making jam and then two and a half cups of sugar we saw someone post on twitch who wished to have more interaction on stream her streams were always empty and all her attempts at reaching out failed you went to her stream when she came on last night as did so many other people she was super happy about it yay that's so good Okay. 
it says follow the instructions for raspberry jam. So we need to pick over the berries to remove any debris or even the overripe fruit. If you have like one moldy berry and put it in to your jam, that can ruin the whole thing. It says crush the berries with the lemon juice and sugar and turn the mixture into a preserving pan. So you just need a nice pan, whether it's like a frying pan or a little pot, whatever you have. She plays Overwatch. Do it up, Vune. Post it in here. Let's show some love. It is Follow Friday, after all. So we're going to reduce our fruit, lemon, and sugar over high heat, stirring constantly until the gel point. So the gel point, what that means, let me just put this up. So the gelling point is... When you first mix the fruit with the sugar, it's going to be kind of cloudy looking. And when you get to a gel point, it's going to go really nice and clear on you. And this usually takes about 10 minutes to achieve. So you really do need to like boil that fruit and get the pectin out of the seeds. It's said about eight minutes there. So eight to 10 minutes is a good thing to keep in mind. It says ladle the hot jam into four prepared half pint jars or whatever you want to put it into. Leave a quarter inch of head space. Seal and then process in a boiling water bath for 10 minutes. And this will pasteurize your jam. And then you just need to leave it in a cool dark place and it should stay for, I would say a year or maybe more. So that's how you make a jam that doesn't have to stay in the fridge right away. A lot of people do like to make freezer jam though. You can buy the little packets in the stores. That's a really quick way to do it, but you just wanna make sure you have enough freezer space to store this jam after you make it. Chef, you're cooking tonight. Okay, I'm gonna click on this link view. Give her a follow as well. Yeah, Sammy. Really good. Am I using a thermometer? I don't think so, Lemon. It just says bring it to the gel point. Do you typically use a thermometer? I have not made that many like proper jams, really. Whoa, vegan gelato. You better get in there, guys. Get in that giveaway. Oh, turned off my keyboard. Rookie move. Go buy some tickets while you still have some bones in your pocket. Okay, so we first have to pick over our fruit. I'm gonna give them a little wash as well. We need two and a half pounds, which actually equals out to two and a half liters when Sammy and I weighed it out the other day. Two and a half cups of sugar. Okay, wait. Yep, two and a half cups of sugar. That's quite a lot, hey? You've never made a proper jam, just thrown things together and it's turned out. Yeah, me too, totally. Very small portions. <laughs> yeah, I can't do rookie moves, come on now. Not allowed. We don't have too much time to put this together. Actually, that's not true because since the lasagna takes 40 minutes to bake in the oven, we'll have lots of time to put this together. So maybe we should focus more on making our casserole first. I do have the berries out, so we're not going to forget about this. We know the process now, we know our ingredients we need, and we'll do that after we assemble the lasagna. Because I think that should be done sooner rather than later. Our sauce has been cooking for 40 minutes now. I give it one more stir. Can you guys still see it okay? I hate that overhead light. How does do 
that instead. There we go. Lemon. Hopefully you'll be here to watch. If not, just watch the VOD afterwards. What? The sauce looks good. It's nicely reduced. And it's nice and chunky. I like that for a lasagna. Because it's going to cook more, right? So it's still going to break down further as it all bakes together. Sammy has something for us. So what all the commotion was about was the power flickered here. So we live here. Right there. <laughs> all of this power is out. So we're lucky as hell. And usually it takes like six yeah. hours. So yeah, we're there. Wow. We literally rest of the Sun River's out of power. Cha ching. <laughs> Have ever made a peanut brittle fudge or fruit cake? Typical holiday candy dishes. Kind that are time sensitive. If you're too slow, your spoon is stuck when it sets up. Yes. I have a quite a bit of history with a peanut brittle or like a caramel. I really like to make brittle. It's really fun. I've also done sponge toffee, which is caramel that you pretty much add baking soda to, which makes it bubble up. That one took me a couple times to make properly. I was taking the candy too far and then it would just taste burnt by the time it's set up. So I understand the struggle armored. Yeah, now you know where we live. Sammy giving it away. Okay, I'm turning the sauce off. You got a little tasty taste. Definitely will need some salt in here. And I guess I shouldn't have taken the board away because we need to chop up our fresh basil now. Throw that in there. It was really hot. I hate burning my mouth. But I think the meat has cooked down perfectly. Kind of just like falls apart in your mouth. Leftover potatoes and lemon juice. And what else? Copper to make batteries. I love that. Kicking it old school. Dragon Ball Overwatch, thanks for the follow. I'm just gonna give these basil leaves a little rinse. They're a little bit dirty. Whoa. What's happening? Egyptian style electricity. And you don't really have to be thorough with this. You can leave the pieces of basil as small or as large as you desire. But keep in mind, the smaller you cut it, the more surface area there is for the flavor to be absorbed into the sauce. Tris, it's okay. I always say, if you guys can find me, come over for dinner. Still waiting for that to happen. And there will be lots of lasagna. So good. So put that in. We'll take the stems from the thyme out of the sauce. It's an important thing to do before you build your lasagna. There's the other one. Okay, I 
think that should be it. Definitely thinking we'll have some meat sauce left over. That's not gonna fit into our lasagna. And that is okay with me. Okay. Let's crack some pepper into here. I think this mill is donezo. She'd be empty. What? That's amazing, Tris. We love visitors. Okay, let's fill our pepper back up. Coming to Vic. If someone tips a non, do you get to see their name via the transaction? Um, that's a good question. I don't think I've really paid attention to it. <laughs> Are you trying to be anonymous? Let me see if I can check real quick now to see about Trists. Cause he just, it said it tipped anonymous from him but he said it was him. So let's see if his name comes up. One second, guys. Yeah, it's still, uh shows your name on the transaction. So you're not completely anonymous, but you are anonymous to the viewers. Ooh, I was close, but <laughs> this thing is a, uh, a little bit sideways. I don't know if we can work it back into the center. No problem, Lemon. Yeah, like how anonymous is that when we can still see it? But I guess that's fair. turn the oven on to preheat while we build this. So 400 Fahrenheit is the temp that you want. Going over there with the salt. Actually, you know what? Maybe I'll just bring the sauce over here. That'll be way better for you. Is my dad a nice guy? Yes. My dad and I are very similar, whereas my brother and my mom are very similar. So my dad and I have very similar personalities. Let's go in with the salt. We'll definitely need a bunch here. Start with a couple of teaspoons. Parmesan rind. Like, look at that. See, it softened up, but it didn't actually fall apart. Let's have a little taste. more salt though and then I think the flavors are really balanced I do get a little hint of the red wine that we deglaze with so that's really nice yeah I'll just take a bowl of this yo have you ever done cheese curds in a bolognese with fries spaghetti poutine do it it's so freaking good Mm -hmm. I 
think we have hit perfection, my friends. I am okay with this. I'm just gonna put this beside the cutting board. It looks yum. Do a bolognese grilled cheese. There you go. There's an idea. We need our casserole over here. I'm totally switching out to a ladle for our meat sauce. And I'm gonna leave the Parmesan rinds there for as long as possible. I've had my pasta just resting over here that I previously rolled out. So we just made, or I just did up nice long sheets like that. So we just have to cut them to fit into the pan. So maybe I'll do that now before we even start. And then we can start to layer. Cheese curds go good on anything. Yes, they do. And we made really long sheets too. All of that pasta. How do I want to measure this? What is the pan? So the pan is pretty much the same width as the cutting board. So that is how I know where to cut it. And maybe I'll just clean up that edge there. It's a little bit straggly. Are the rinds completely useless after you pull them out? Good question, Lemon. Honestly, I haven't done this too many times, but they do look amazing. I would hope that you could put them into something still afterwards, but there's not like any cheese left on there, right? Because it's pretty much just the waxy piece that most people throw away anyways. Okay, there's our lasagna sheet. It's not crimped on the edges. Please don't hate me, guys. 2%, yeah, whatever else. Who cares what it is, Rook? As long as there's meat and cheese. And for this pasta, when I rolled it out, I didn't go as thin as what we did yesterday, so I only went to seven instead of eight. So it's a little bit thicker. So we got two there. We might have to cut some of them in half. Cheese candle, does that exist, Lemon? I want that for Christmas. Wait, what did your family do with Baby Bell? Okay, look, this guy is perfectly measured already. Hell yeah. So this is what I'm thinking. That, and then we'll need half of one of these to fit the other side. So one and a half of these per layer. I guess I can totally do this right now though. Use this fun little roller to cut it in half. This is like a ravioli cutter. Yay, perfection. So we can even just do this, put that together. One layer. You made a candle out of the wax coating on the snacking cheese. See, that is brilliant. Two layers. Put those back in here. This guy out. I think I'm just gonna use the roller to cut. It's pretty.
pretty easy. It's working well for me. some extra pasta rolled. I think I only can do four layers anyways, just because that casserole is not super deep. So it looks like we might be having some pasta tomorrow after I get home from work. I already did all the work. Sammy's just got to make some sauce, which if there's leftover bolognese, then there's already sauce. Thanks, lemon. Honestly, pasta is my love. Pizza and pasta, so good. And actually on that topic, food thought for the day is, what's your favorite Italian dish? It doesn't have to be pasta. It can be anything Italian that you really love or it's like your go-to at your favorite Italian restaurant. And that is a really hard question for me to answer. Let's get our ricotta out of the fridge and also our matzah and parm for the topping. And our first layer is always a little bit of sauce because otherwise the pasta might stick to the bottom and it can burn because this is a high heat, right? 400. Pizza. I think that would be mine too, Lemon. I can't, I can't help it. Pizza and pasta. True loves. But you don't need to make this layer super thick. You just need that little coating. Make that barrier between the pasta and the bottom of the dish. Spread it all out so it's pretty even. Maybe we'll get a little bit more here. And now we'll start with our first layer of pastas. You can get drunk on red sauce. <laughs> Success. And let me just say this, guys, you can totally use dried lasagna noodles for this recipe. I understand if you don't want to make your own noodles. It might not turn out quite the same, but I think it would be pretty close. Okay, so now we can layer our cheese. So the ricotta always goes on top of the pasta when you layer. We'll have to keep in mind that we're doing like three or four layers, so split your ricotta evenly. Let's get a spatula. Maybe this guy's gonna work really well. This is called an offset spatula. And you can make your lasagna as like messy or as perfect as you want between the layers. Have fun with it. That's all I'm going to say. If someone complains that your layers aren't perfect, well then they just don't appreciate your cooking. Just put a little bit more over here. had a girl in high school that was voted most likely to get drunk off a non-alcoholic drink. That is pretty bad. No wonder some people like despise high school. That's pretty harsh. But there are those people that like fake drunk, right? That are kind of annoying. Fair enough. Yeah, get out. Get out of here. Okay, so now Another layer of sauce. So you can see it's still a little bit watery, guys, but I haven't cooked the pasta yet. 
So we still need that little bit of liquid to be able to cook the pasta as the lasagna casserole cooks. You definitely want to spread this all the way out to the edges. Deadly. That's where we're at so far. Ready for the next layer? Linguini Matuccio. Pizza margarita and of, course, and of course focaccia come to mind. Those are great picks, vegan. What is Linguini Matuccio? I do love a good Marg pizza though. And there's something about if the dough is amazing, all you need is tomato sauce and cheese. They can wear it. Yeah, vegan. <laughs> Okay, no sauce now. On to the cheese again. Oh, that's a money maker, Trist. Butter tarts made into edibles. If there's nothing more Canadian than that, you might be onto something, man. We might have to do some uh, recipe testing real soon. Mahogany Dawes, oh, so good. The almond and chocolate, that's where it's at. Okay, that's our oven, which means it's 515 already. We're doing okay though. I'm gonna say because the sauce is already hot in here, this will take half an hour, not 40 minutes. Because you know how fast the pasta cooks. You saw it yesterday, it took two minutes to boil in the pot. So I am really not too worried about our timings today, guys. Matuccio is a red sauce with clams and shrimp. Oh my goodness, that sounds unreal. The seafood totally makes the dish. I believe it. I just like that word. Like I love Italian words, Matuccio. They're just really fun to say. Aveni, thanks for the follow and welcome in. So when you're getting near the top of la the lasagna, keep in mind, you're still gonna need a little bit of room for the cheese on the top, right? So we're pushing it now. I know we wanted to maybe do the four layers. I don't know if we'll be able to. This is getting pretty close to the top. And if this bubbles over in your oven, terrible, terrible time. Rebels, thanks for the host. What's the white creme? So this was just a ricotta cheese mixed with egg. That's it. I think we're gonna call it quits with that layer. We got three pasta layers in there. I feel good about it, or did we? No, we only got two. Okay, we need to do one more. It's a must. You can't only have two layers of lasagna. Grow up, guys. Grow up, Kate. I'll tell myself. Maybe I'll just do a cheese for the top layer. Spread the ricotta and then the matzah. Dirty. Okay, sounds good, Lemon. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. And I will see you next week. Hey Chance, how's it going? Welcome back. Try to scrape out all of it. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, this might not even cover the whole thing. Just put it on the pasta sheets. That way they won't dry out too much. Has anyone ever made lasagna with like zucchini or eggplant in place of the pasta noodles? Or is that just like frowned upon? Okay, that's as far as we're going. Maybe I'll put, okay, just a touch more meat sauce. Come on guys, just a little bit more. If it goes over, it goes over. Nah, but for real, I'll just put a sheet pan underneath this casserole in the oven so if it goes over it's not going to actually spill into the oven gotta think about these things you've done it with sliced zook i believe i have as well definitely comes out way more watery hey gotta push those limits with those layers minimum three not in place, but you did add a plant. Oh, that's a good idea too. I'm just gonna put this pasta back onto the sheet pan, keep it all wrapped up so it doesn't dry out too much. I'm gonna do our matzo first, just dot it. Roast the zook first to get, to get rid of the excess liquid. That's a good way to do it. Another way, to get the liquid out of the zook is to salt it. So you slice the zook thin like you would for lasagna noodles. Lay it out on a pan with paper towel under it and cover it pretty evenly with salt. Obviously you don't wanna go crazy because you don't want it to taste too salty. And then the salt is gonna draw out the moisture and the paper towel will then soak that up. Okay, how does this look, guys? Wonder how the new categories will affect viewer traffic for IRL cooking streams. I'm very interested to see what comes out of that view. I saw a lot of people on Twitter were really upset about them getting rid of the communities, which I don't like. I don't really know much about the communities because I don't obviously explore that much on Twitch. I will say that, guys. I'm usually on stream or busy working or doing something else. Or preparing for your stream. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know all of the effects that these changes are going to have, but it was interesting to read some of the different opinions that people had. Yeah, they're getting rid of communities and putting tags in instead. And a lot of people said, well, why don't you just have them co-mingle together? Rook, is this cheesy enough for you? Or do we need more cheese? More still? cheese. Yeah, I don't even know what the communities are either. But apparently it's a bad thing that they're being taken away. Okay, 522. Perfect. Let's get our lasagna in. Like I said, this will take probably only half an hour. <sighs> Looks freaking ridiculous. Let me put the camera up so we can see all the layers in here. Oh, those are the communities. Okay, interesting. Hello. Let's not forget to put our sheet pan under this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sounds good, Rook. Have a wonderful weekend, dude, and thanks for everything. Okay. 
gonna do even the lower end. 25 minutes. Let's see what happens in that time. Put the sauce over there to just chill, cool off. I think I'll take my other bathroom break and then we can make some blackberry jam. Let's get into it. Keep ourselves busy while the rest of dinner is cooking. Wow, Rook, just lose the 99 bones. Just like that. Hey, Rush. <laughs> Rook leaves, Rush comes in. How are you doing today? Okay, I will be right back, my people. Whoa, Sammy's got that luck. I told you. Are we ready? Death, how are you? I think I might need one more scoop of the sauce. It's just really good. Sauce snacks. Mm-hmm. Hey. Blackberries, let's do this. So you just need to pick through them, make sure there's no wormies. Obviously the ones with that little bit of red, they're just a little bit under ripe still. But since they'll be mixed with the rest of the ripe ones, we'll be okay. another forest fire in Cali as well. What is going on in the world? Sammy, you want a blackberry? No. 424 bones gone. The struggle? Do this a little bit faster now. That one I'm throwing away. Worst year in history, holy shit, that's nuts. Very large fires in Cali. Guys, I don't watch the news, like at all, because usually it's really depressing for me. So that's why I don't know a lot about what's going on in the world. I did pick these armored. Yeah, we picked three liters in like the last week. And that doesn't even make a dent on what there is to pick here. It is just insanity. And then 
I'll still give these a little rinse as well before we even start to make the jam. Just use Google, yeah, fair enough. So we have a bunch in here that are pretty underripe. Ooh, and they got really soft too. Okay, I'll just get rid of those. And we only need to use half of this liter. So that is it. So two and a half pounds is what we're looking for. News is fake news anymore. It's all opinions, not the news. Yeah, it's craziness. Blackberries are not native to North America. They are imported from England, if you're remembering your history. We did a little bit of blackberry history yesterday, and I think you're right. I think they are from England. And they go grow really well on the west coast here. They're wild everywhere. Okay, we obviously need a pretty big pot. I think this guy will be great. I'm just gonna go over to the sink and give these a little rinse. And then we will mash it all up with the sugar and the lemon juice. The blackberries are everywhere in Oregon. Yeah, same with here on the island. And climbing ivy, yeah, the ivy is nuts, hey? It'd be pretty devastating. How much you miss mulberries. They're all along the road. Same with here, Trist. So you don't want to pick those ones because they're with the car fumes. So that's not good for you. A tad bit of sugar and make sandwiches? That sounds amazing. Two and a half cups of sugar. I'm just gonna finish this beer off. Hopefully that's enough. It might just be. Very close. beer. The beer was a blueberry kettle sour. Not homemade. It's really yummy. Bottles in the sink. Blueberry blast kettle sour. From Dead Frog Brewery. Dead Frog Brewery. It was really good. 
and refreshing. Next step, we gotta juice our lemon. <laughs> if you just nod it off. Love it. Well, you can blame the butter tarts though if you need to. Hope you have a wonderful weekend, man. And thank you for everything. Glad to see you cook and stream and still. And I love that you're still making the butter tarts. Have a good one, Vyun. So two tablespoons of lemon juice is what we need. <laughs> Trist here to keep everyone in check. Sleep is good for you, it's true. Sleep's the best. You have a chill weekend planned. Awesome, dude. That's perfect. Get your rest. Good night, Beune. The lemon has been squeezed. Not the limping lemon, though. Just regular lemon. Measure. We might not have enough. Looks like only one. One tablespoon. Come on. We were so close. They look similar to blackberries, but they're sweeter. Interesting. <laughs> Trist, I need some. They might. They might have them, Tristan. Whoa. When the lemon juice is squeezing out of the top of the juicer, there's something wrong. Do we have guns and shooting? Oh, do we have guns and go shooting? Oh, uh, you can. For sure you can. It's not like a very popular thing though. Okay, I'm gonna turn this burner on so we can start to heat it up. And then we'll just smash up the berries while it heats up. Guess what we'll use? Our handy dandy potato masher. I think that'll be the best option here for us. Sam, you want your water? jars we have to put this into. I 
that's as far as we're gonna tape it. And now we just need to let that come up to a boil. So I'm gonna go see what we have for jars and I'll be right back. You used to know the white mulberry leaf shape by heart because your silkworms ate those exclusively. Hilarious. <laughs> Rush, thanks for the menu post. I will be back, guys. She has come for her snacks and I have arrived with a couple of jars, some good medium sized ones. Posh, come here. Cook, you're a cook. Welcome in, Justin. Guns are very popular where you live. That's cool, Death. Hey, come here. She loves broccoli stems. Okay, let's turn it around. Whoa, almost got it. Thanks for the follow, Justin. Welcome in. Good catch. You want a dog a close up? The garburator slash composter. Good poo poo. Bye, Rush. Thanks for popping in while you can. It is so much appreciated. Hope everything is good with the fam. And I will see you next week. Doggo never disappoints. No, I told you that she would come back for her snacks. Never got to worry about that one. She knows where the snacks are. Okay, so I would not recommend using a wooden spoon to stir blackberry jam, or probably any type of fruit jam for that matter, because it probably will stain it. So let's use something plastic. Just a little bit. <laughs> like Earl. <laughs> That's what your dog's name is. I love that. Oh, Earl. I'm just going to quickly wash these out. And then... I'm gonna do a couple of these little guys. This is something awesome to have ready to go. If you have like company coming over that you wanna send away with something or it's someone's birthday or something special, give them some homemade jam. I don't think they would be upset. It's his cat, okay. I've never seen his cat on stream. My mistake.
He's fat and lazy. Like most cats are. It's very accurate. I'm going to set up all the jars on a sheet pan here. So that they're ready to fill and close. And like I said, we will be boiling them in a pot of water once they're sealed for 10 minutes and that will pasteurize the jam inside. And that way it's stable at room temperature. The kind you make lasagna for, yeah, exactly, Death. Okay, like I said, I'm just gonna give these three jars a little rinse out. Make sure they're nice and sterilized. Even though I'm quite sure everything would be cooked off when we pasteurize later, but just to be sure. I know I haven't used them in a long time. Yeah, Garfield. I knew that's what you were referring to. Garfield and lasagna go hand in hand. Okay, I can see our blackberries are just coming up to a boil. From a mason jar lid, if you don't damage it too much, you should be able to use it for like a good five to ten times. But sometimes when the seal is really hard to crack the seal, you kind of smash on the lid so that it opens easier. So that kind of breaks that seal a little bit. So once it's broken like that, maybe two more times, and I would say that's it. Look at those bubbles. So see how it's really foamy right now and red? You gotta cook that until it actually goes like the color of the blackberries when we originally started with them. So really nice and clear. And that's called the gel stage. Pretty interesting. This is like one of the first times I've made a proper jam by like following a recipe. So this is pretty exciting for me. Oh no. What the hell is going on? It's good, Sammy. Don't worry. browsing on belly guys see who we're gonna raid later on and we have 40 seconds left on the lasagna and it's looking real good already I think like an additional five minutes maybe not even so it's bubbling all over maybe just a quick finish under the broil to brown up the cheese and I think we're good to go because we will have to put the broccoli in pretty soon. I saw Sushi Day was on. It's been a while since we've went into there. So that's exciting. And yeah, if Chef is on, then for sure. 
We'll give him a visit. Do you smell it, Sammy? That's the telltale oh, sign. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Schnippin. So dangerous. Okay, look at that, guys. Like, we're so close. So like I said, I'm just gonna turn the broiler on because that's what we need to cook the broccoli at anyways. Chef is in Sushi's chat. He was here as well. This is freaking unreal. Waiting for the broiler to heat up. It smells too good, guys. I'm dying. He's a traitor, not even. Don't even say those things, guys. People are free to do whatever they want on the internet. Definitely not a traitor. That looks pretty heavy. <laughs> yeah, I know you're kidding, but that's not something I can agree with. People can always go back and look after and be like, what? She agreed with that. I just don't want to get in trouble. I think that's the main thing. So this will take maybe a couple minutes under the broiler. Then we have to let it sit for probably a good 5-10 before we even cut into it. Yeah, exactly, Armored. A lot of people watch a couple streams at the same time. Thanks, Death. It really does look great and it smells so freaking good. Pumped. Okay, a broiler should be hot. Let's go in. We'll wash this closely. Definitely don't want to burn it. Starting to smell like blackberry dip. And then the broccoli will go in while our lasagna rests. You have sugar in there? Yeah. Never, Sammy? Sammy says he's never made jam before, but that's a lie. Mm. That's gonna be delicious. That's gonna be really good. Tart and sweet. Great balance. It's not as tart as I thought it would be, that's for sure. Yeah, it's definitely sweeter than I thought it would be. Okay, guys, so top cheer of the week, looking like Chance is staying on top. Hell yeah. And then we have our donator, thanks to Trist, popping in here. So, so far, it looks like you guys are staying on top. And obviously, Trist, you want burritos already. Chance, I don't know if you're still in here, man, but I will be contacting you to get your request for next week. And honestly, Death, I'm writing this down right now for you and Opteryx. I'm totally making cookies for you next week. I know I kept saying it for the last three weeks, but you guys have done so much for me in this stream, so I really wanna reward you. And I'm gonna send some cookies to you. So whatever kind of cookie you want, let me know. Cookies! So good! I was like, I smell cheese. 
being really browned. And there's that. <laughs> I think that was the fastest you've ever seen me move on stream. I was like, not the lasagna. Yeah. Okay, we saved it. It is like almost too far, but I think it's like seriously perfect. I like when the cheese gets nice and dark like that. Look at that. Like you gotta push those limits. And it is matzah, so it's pretty soft, right? So we're just gonna let that rest. Oh, holy <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Today for you, I make a lasagna. Okay, broccoli's going in. Let's do five minute timer. We'll check it every five, just to make sure doesn't burn. Our jam is almost there. It's starting to get more clear in the center there. So we're kind of just boiling off any impurities. Yeah, he's just going to smoke. Is he really doing work? Butterscotch macadamia nut. That sounds so good armored. I wonder what Chance is going to request. Haha, <laughs> gelato. Those gifted subs. Well, I guess you get the emotes from them too. It could be worse. Okay, Chance is not in here anymore. And that is okay. Butterscotch macadamia nut. I can't even. Okay, we're almost there. Pretty much as soon as that bit of foam gets cooked away, we're good to go. We can fill the jars which I don't know if we'll be able to do that on stream today. We'll see how everything times out. Notice I'm saying it like that. So bad. Nothing crazy going on in there. The broccoli is okay. It's not bad. It's not bad. <laughs> Step. You're Italian, you can teach me. Well, come on in. I mean, we just pulled the lasagna out of the oven. Freaking almost took it too far, but it looks so good and smells amazing still. So I feel good. I'll let it rest and then our veggies are cooking. But I do love Italian food, so I'm so willing to take any help. little too cooked. Yeah, that's what I just said. It's almost too much time under the broiler, but I smelt it. A really good sense of smell. And I was like, that smells like almost burnt cheese. Will I be doing more giveaways? I actually have a giveaway going right now, Trist, for some salts. So I have four salts made locally here on the island. 
I know this sounds weird, but salted caramel chocolate, really good on like any desserts that have whipped cream or even in coffee. So this is a four pack. Next up, sun-dried tomato and basil. Really, really nice. I used it yesterday on the tomatoes when we roasted them. Sweet and smoky maple. So that is a easy way to do a smoked salmon. And lastly, lemon and dill infused, which I'm sure would be amazing with potatoes. You wanna win that. Okay, Tris, so if you do the giveaway command, you honestly have a lot of points, dude. And that is how we're basing the giveaway. So whatever bones that you accumulate, each ticket costs a thousand bones to enter the giveaway. And then we're going all the way to the end of the month. I'm wondering if one can cook an egg using the carryover heat on the lasagna. Probably. Nothing crazy happening. Let's do another five. Have I ever been in Italy? I have. I went, I think in 2015. I did a nice little tour through Europe. I went to Milan, Bologna, Naples, Rome, Florence. I think that's it. I love Italy though. If I could be from another heritage, I would pick that. Probably strictly because of the food and the language. Tristan the Bone Baron, yeah, hilarious. I'm just trying to find a little bit more about that gel method when we make jams. I don't think I'm gonna find anything. Oh, there we go, canning basics. Jam basics. I'm not finding anything still. Oh, the gel set. So jam goes through four stages in the preserving pan. Raw, cooked, reduced, and gel set. At the gel set, the hot jam is thick, glossy, and ready to be jarred. That's nuts, Trist. Naples has the best food. Did you try it like pizza? Yes, of course. That's actually why I went there, is because I love pizza. And I had pizza almost every day that I was there. Just tried a bunch of different ones, unreal. Venice is really nice. Oh, sorry, did I leave Venice out? I went to Venice as well. Very, very cool place I have to say okay this is getting crazy I'm just gonna turn this down a touch it's starting to splash and I don't want to get burnt like they're not lying when they say Venice is sinking because at night the streets do get flooded it was very kind of scary I have to say okay gel set so the hot jam is thick, glossy, and ready to be jarred. A candy thermometer provides the technical measure of doneness. Eight degrees Fahrenheit above the boiling point of water, AKA boiling point of water at sea level is 212. So I'll be looking for 220 Fahrenheit. Let's check it right now. See where we're at. Death should be in the top 10. Do it up, Trist. I think Lemon already has like 20 tickets in there and I think there might be a cap okay we're only at 208 so good thing we checked 
if you take it off too early, your jam is not going to thicken up. So we have 10 more degrees to go. <laughs> Death. Yeah, you went all in, lost everything. Classic. So another test for a gel set jam. Well, this is, might be boring for you guys, but it's known as the cold saucer test. So if you put a little plate or bowl into the freezer, get it really cold, and then put a little bit of your hot jam onto the bowl, and it doesn't just smooth out, it stays put, then you know you're good to go. Place it in the freezer for one minute, it says. Okay, hey, we're doing good, guys. I'm gonna try and get a little photo of the jam in the pot right now. And maybe a boomerang. Do you guys like doing boomerangs? The bubbles. It's like a little cauldron. Oh no, death. What a Friday. Okay, it's smelling like the broccoli should be pretty much done. Oh yeah, we're getting a little bit of char on there. I think maybe three more minutes. Test this guy one more time. Hold and steady at 210. It's virtual, fake, whatever you want to call it. Exactly. Angels of love, you're from Naples? That is amazing. I definitely want to go back to Italy one day. It's an awesome, awesome place. I love how honest everyone is there. Some people aren't that friendly, but that's like one of the best parts is they don't give a shit either. They are themselves and that's all that matters. Okay, let's get into this. I think I'm going to try and make the first slice while we are waiting for our broccoli to finish. Should we do it into like 12 pieces? Do smaller ones or should we do like eight massive lasagna pieces? I think we should do eight. Make it dirty. Is the 720 resolution gone for good? Yeah, so my MacBook can only stream at 720, but obviously Sammy's computer can do 1080. So that's what we're gonna try and do for the meantime, it's been working out really well. Yeah, I have been to Napoli and it was wonderful. I don't know if I have a favorite place in Italy. I like how different all the places are and the different types of food that originated there. Okay guys, important question though. What's your favorite piece of lasagna? Are you a corner piece person or are you center piece? I 
thinking that jam is good. I don't want it to reduce too much while we finish up the stream. So here we go for our broccoli. So just a little bit of color on the top there. And where's my paring knife? If we poke the stem, it's not completely mush. So there's still a little bit of crunch, which is great. Now for our garnish, this is the best part. Let's just mix up our fresh lemon zest and herbs that we prepped earlier. Maybe we won't use all of this, but this will really freshen it up. That way we have a nice healthy vegetable dish to go with our heavy lasagna. And I don't know if I want to do too much lemon juice. I might just put my hand in it. Do a little sprinkle over everything. Time to head to Olive Garden tonight. I love that. last time you ate or even made lasagna. I'm so excited. I'm always scared when I take it out of the pan though that it's just gonna go everywhere. So let's hope that doesn't happen. Sammy, I don't know where Sammy is. Oh, he's upstairs. I guess he's talking to you guys. Going in for that corner piece. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah, we did. Hello. Hello there. Slide that off real nice. Don't make a mess. I don't know if you can even see all of those layers. Hello there. I'm so excited for food now. Which pizza do I prefer? I don't know if I have a favorite. I mean, I'll eat pretty much any pizza, but obviously in Italy, I always like to try a margarita. I feel like that's the true test. Ma I made Death's mom hungry. I love that. It's been a while since I did that for her. Chef just got on to us. Hey, we will go give him some love after this. Just grabbing a pair of tongs for the broccoli. And we'll finish plating up. Margarita. It's so good. Simple and delicious. And that way you know that the ingredients have to be amazing and fresh. When something is that simply prepared. Just gonna have a little taste of one of these pieces of broccoli. really good. So obviously when you do broccoli like this, it doesn't stay super nice and green. That might be the only downfall of this preparation. Maybe I want to change up the plating a little bit here. We need more white space, my friends. Do something like that. Okay, let's go take a quick photo and then we can dig into this. How many layers? I only did three. I wish I had a deeper lasagna pen. The first pizza you always eat is a margarita. Exactly, it's a true test.
let's do this. I'm just gonna cut off a piece here and see how there's not sauce going everywhere on the plate from the lasagna that's very important guys you don't want it to be super runny because that means you're gonna lose a bunch of flavor when that goes out of there and yes it is messy got our sauce and cheese in there our fresh pasta really really good guys the pasta is perfect it's not falling apart on us it still has a little bit of bite the cheese does not taste burnt even though we took it almost too far the carrots and the tomatoes and the beef and the sauce pretty much just melt in your mouth it might need a touch of salt if i'm being really picky but other than that this is so yummy. Lasagna is love. <laughs> Bye. Yeah, Sammy the food thief. Mm. The top layer of cheese is everything. Because that's salty parm, right? Anyone else in here really sick? And just take the top layer of cheese off and save it to the end. I've definitely done that a couple of times. <laughs> Not scared to say it. Okay, let's try our vegetables. Which are going to be so mediocre compared to lasagna. Let's just be honest. It is really nice and fresh. Just that little bit of color on the broccoli gives a different flavor, caramelization. The lemon zest is awesome in there. It's almost like a palate cleanser from when you eat the lasagna. It's really heavy compared to when you eat the veg. The fresh herbs are great, keeping everything nice and bright. Oh, no, angels. Yeah, it's so late. You got those late night munchies. I do think the broccoli still needs a touch of salt, though. That's my only thing. And because we use the chili garlic oil, I am getting a little hint of like roasted garlic. And some bites I do get just a little bit of spice in the back of my mouth. But other than that, really, really good dinner. Bacon and more bacon for death. It sounds really good. Okay guys, who do we feel like raiding? We want to do chef. Oh, wow. So chef is doing spaghetti bolognese. You want to see how chef does his bolognese? Wow, sushi day. They have 158 people watching. They must have gotten a pretty big grade then. Okay, let us do... Let's go into chef then. I think he's live in a little bit. So he hasn't even started yet. Yeah, sushi day is on fire. Do we want to go in there and see what's going on? Or you want to do something a little more low key? Tristan loves chef. There is some love there. Turn the oven off now too. Well, chef hasn't started yet though. She just got a rage. She's making cheese. I've done matzo like that before. It's fun, but actually pretty difficult. Okay, since Chef's not quite on yet, he's he just put it back up. He's not live for like seven minutes. So I don't think anyone's going to wait around. Let's go see Sushi Day since they're crushing it. End off on a really high note for them. Hopefully that will help their average for the month cut the meat sauce finer oh thanks step so i actually ground that meat fresh in the grinder so maybe i should even use a finer 
die next time in the grinder. That's some good criticism. I'll take it. I do like chunky meat sauce though. So maybe that's just my personal preference. But anywho, thank you Trist for the donation this week. We got some burritos coming next week. Chance is our top cheer. So I'll be contacting him. Thank you for all the follows today, guys. The little bit of bitties and the awesome week. Hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. And I will see you on Monday.